Hey YouTube people, as you all know over the years I have been a fan of building out my own mini PC devices and I thought it would be really neat to rebuild one of my HT PCs that I use around the house uh, using a new Ryzen 5 system, specifically the one with the Radeon Vega graphics integrated uh, to build a really high powered mini device. Um, but the kicker was I was interested in 3D printing my own case and trying to figure out how to do that, something I have never done before. So I thought it would be a fun little challenge. So I've gathered my parts together. This is, this is a fairly budget build, but it's still pretty powerful. Um, we've got a Fatality AS Rock AB350 Gaming ITX uh, motherboard, which we can see right here. And we've got a Pico PSU 150 XT um, with some of the additional pieces. We've got kind of a random Amazon power button that I'm going to use in conjunction with my 3D printed case. And some Kingston uh, DDR4, 8 gigs of RAM there. So pretty straightforward little mini Raven Ridge Ryzen 5 build. What I plan on doing is, since, since I, you know, most case manufacturers have to worry about, you know, how many drives people can add and things like that. Oh, I forgot to mention, uh, we also have a Samsung um, Evo 850 that I had lying around, which will go on the back of the board right here. So kind of a cool little setup. And the price of all these parts put together, if you add everything up, is about four hundred and forty dollars. Um, I actually had some of these parts on hand, but if you take the retail price of all these these items, or the current price on Amazon of all these items, it really is, you know, a pretty inexpensive little piece of kit. So, anyways. Um, I want my case, my 3D printed case that I'm going to build, to be fairly small. I printed, I just did a test print just to make sure the size was right. This is actually a, a piece that I printed, uh, the very bottom of the case. And just so I could check and make sure that the board fit okay. And it's going to be, it's going to be tight, but that's the point. Um, I will actually uh, queue up on my PC over here uh, my design because it's actually pretty neat. So let's switch over to the PC and look at my design and we'll talk about it. Okay, here we are over on the PC. I'm using an application called Tinkercad and this is my case right here. The gray shadowed areas are actually holes so don't be, don't be fooled. Uh, those blocks are not jutting out of the case they will just make a hole in the orange portion of the case so I'm, I'm actually going to do this case in black but uh, for testing I'm just using some uh, orange filament that I have plenty of and I probably won't use for much else but this is the case and you can see on the back it has room for the Pico PSU adapter to screw in and the power button on the front and the other thing I did was all of the mesh on the sides to provide airflow um, are the AMD symbol, which I thought was a, a nice little touch. And then uh, there will be a lid that goes on the top of this. So um, it is very minimal. You can see by the screw placement that this motherboard is just going to fit in here. So hopefully thermals look okay, but the fact that there's really nothing else there besides memory and the CPU, there's no drives, there's no power supply inside the chassis other than, you know, the Pico PSU, with, but all the AC-DC conversion will happen at the power brick. So I'm thinking it will be a quite cool on the inside. The top cover, I need to measure once the motherboard is installed and make sure I'm going to have a opening a circular opening that fits right exactly above the fan of the stock AMD fan, uh, which should allow plenty of airflow going into the case and then blowing out through the sides. 
But one thing I realized um, as I've been envisioning this 3D print is I don't I'll, I don't have much support uh, for these sections, and uh, it I probably need to shrink down the sides. Although I think it looks cool larger. Um, if I shrink them down, there'll be less area along the top to um, to have to print in midair. And when you're 3D printing, you really can't print into midair very easily. <laughs> um, you, you can do it, uh, but you have to be very careful when doing it. So if I shrink these down, uh, I should get a much better result. So obviously, I'll add more openings and just shrink the pattern. Uh, down a little bit, but this this will be my case. Um, I'm going to make those modifications to the side, and then we'll start printing this and putting it together. Okay, I've shrunk down my pattern uh, substantially, but I think it actually still looks pretty good. So here's the front of the case with the power button hole, and then uh, the AMD logo on the side. And that's, I mean, it's it's basic, but it's it's all I need. So, um, what I'm going to do next is load this up onto the 3D printer, and we will see how it prints. Uh, this print will probably take about 18 hours. I'm going to print it just rough draft uh, speed using the orange filament that I can spare. I, don't, I only have so much black, uh, so I want to make sure that I get all the settings right before I actually go to print the final version of this case in high detail. So uh, let's go ahead and get started on that. Okay, so here we are mid-print. Just waking up this morning to see this, and things are looking pretty good. Um, you can see that the design seems to be holding up. It's not going stringy or crazy anywhere. And I can already see one area where I have an issue. And that is on the left side of the case over there. The AMD is set up correctly, but on this side I forgot to flip it, so the AMD logo is going to be backwards. Which isn't an issue, but I'll fix it for the final print. So this has been a good test print already, but uh, there's still a ways to go. This is about 10 hours in. We still need another 8 hours to finish the rest of the case. But, um, so far, um, I was kind of worried about the base being able to go down. Uh, very well and you can see it's kind of got a honeycomb uh, pattern inside it. Um, when I do black it won't be as apparent. If you wanted to you could do kind of a glowy case uh, with this kind of translucent PLA that I've got here. Uh, but uh, the, you know who knows. If this case actually works out well um, as a prototype um, Maybe I'll give it away on my channel or something if you're interested in an orange mini ITX case. So, anyways, uh, we'll come back once this case is absolutely finished. So we're about to have the moment of truth here where the uh, try to cover the gap here. Um, my guess is it's not going to do too well, but it uh, might be fun to just see. Ooh! Snap! Holy cow! Well, the first one looked pretty good.
it may actually pull it off reasonably. That is pretty cool. We'll have to see what the next pass does. That that may be enough uh, to actually have a pretty good... I mean, it's not going to be perfect. There's a little bit of a droop hang down there. But my goodness, that was a pretty decent bridge. I might not even have to do supports. So we'll, we'll see how it goes. There's the second pass on this. Whether it is going to be able to firm that up, I don't know. There's enough that's going to be on top of that. It may have to be filed down, but I think that will, uh, I think it'll work. So while we're waiting for that to print, I figured we'd just go ahead and get started assembling some of these things to make sure of everything we need and it all fits together. That's pretty much everything. In fact, it is everything. And good to go. So here's the finished print of the prototype case. And it looks pretty good. Um, while it did look like it was printing pretty okay. Um, it did bow enough that it's probably going to cause an issue. Um, so I will probably print the final case with supports here, but I'm going to uh, probably just shave these bottom ones off, um, just grind those down and to see if this fits okay and it, the test fit goes well. All right, with just a little bit of shaving, uh, that fits in there nicely and we'll go ahead and test fit the rest of the components okay guys uh well this video's started to get pretty long so i'm going to break it up into two parts um but i did want to show off this new case design after prototyping the orange case um, i came up with quite a few edits first of all i found i could reduce the height of the case to make it more uh, trim and slim and i also did not like the way that the top was going on uh, so I actually created this recessed lip that will make everything be nice and flush. Uh, I also had to adjust the power button location from the center to the left hand side 
and I've uh, fixed my little AMD logo on the side and done a few different adjustments that I, once I had everything together in the prototype case I realized uh, needed to change. So uh, the new and final case is printing right now and in part two I'll give you an overview and show you how that all goes together. So if you stuck with me this far I hope you've enjoyed watching uh, the process as much as I've enjoyed playing around with it. Um, please subscribe to make sure you don't miss part two and uh, I'll also make these uh, files available to everybody on that uh, second video that comes out once I've finalized everything and made sure that I have a a really nice build um, that actually works and tested and good to go so anyways thanks for watching and please subscribe. We'll see you soon.